Hello, welcome. This is a deep dive into LTI 1.3 in the Open edX platform. This is Giovanni Sim Simolin from uh, OpenCraft. This is Jill Vogel, also from OpenCraft. Hi, um, we've put the, the URL for the slides up here because there's some the pretty detailed ones that Gian, specific what Gian, Giovanni's going through. So if you want to follow along or if you want to look at more detail or look at it later, that's the place. So we are doing the deep dive into um, LTI 1.3 on the platform. Oh, the thing is not working. Oh, yay, it is. It okay. is? Yay. That's, yeah, okay. Mic up. Yeah. Hold the mic up. Okay. So we should start with what is LTI? So LTI, it stands for Learning Tools Interoperability. It came from the IMS Global Consortium, um, who gave us lovely things like the common cartridge format, SCORM, learning objects, metadata, all sorts of industry standards in uh, learning management. And um, it's a way to extend the platform. Um, it allows content and tool reuse between different learning management systems. So if you want to do content on platforms other than Open edX, LTI is really the way to do that. Um, there's communication tools like forums, educator tools like grade books, um, content, uh, course content and library content. Um, and you can use it, you can use whatever language or platform you want to, to write it in. It doesn't have to be in Python because it's basically not running on the platform. It's just a way for the platform to talk to, um, talk to your tools. Um, some limitations, um, it's a full separate app, so you're going to have to host it or somebody's going to have to host it. And so you basically have to be prepared to do that. It's not just something you can just add into the platform and run with. Um, so what is LTI 1.3? So we've had LTI 1.1 forever. It, is, it, was, it was the standard for ages and years and lots and lots of things were written for it. And so um, this conversion to 1.3 has been a bit painful. Um, there's a really good full tutorial on this. There's a, a YouTube playlist and we've got some links at the end. If you wanna like find out the, the nitty gritty uh, details about what and why, that's a good place to start. Because um, LTI 1.3 is a total rewrite, so there's there were a lot of security problems with LTI 1.1, um, mainly just about like where your keys are stored and how the authentication works and all of that. It's it wasn't so great. Um, LTI 1.3 improves all of that um, and also allows for scalability and rotating keys and um, doing nice security things like that. Um, it also adds a granular service framework called LTI Advantage which allows us to add a bunch of um, extra features that are useful to LTI and all following a protocol so that, yeah, so that lots of different tools can actually be used and integrated in with everybody's LMSs. Um, so the LTI Advantage extensions, um, to be LTI Advantage certified, you need to provide these three services. Um, the first one's the assignments and grading service, um, and it allows you to pass grades, numeric grades and their statuses back and forth to the LMS. Um, statuses like whether it's been started, whether it's, it's been completed, um, whether it's been scored and graded. Um, and there's the result service is like a, a read-only service um, so that the LTI can read grades on the platform as well. Um, the second service is the deep linking thing. So this is something you could do in LTI 1.1, but it was awkward. And there wasn't really a standard way to do it. Like you could pass in CGI parameters and things and say, I'm going to the LTI, but really I want to see this little bit of content. Um, but now LTI 1.3 provides an actual protocol specific way of, of navigating to specific bits inside of your, inside of your tool. So that's lovely, and it's also a lot easier to, to choose which sets of content you want to show, um, at least if with the way we've implemented it, it's, it's nicer. So, um, and the other one is the names and rules provisioning. So when okay. you have a user that auth authenticates to the LTI tool, you can tell them what kind of a user they are, whether they're staff, students, and what kind of privileges they have in that. Um, the dot, dot, dot is the other services that are available, other things that people might want to provide, like proctoring, uh, which is under consideration right now on OpenEdX, um, resource searching, 
caliper, um, event streams, um, all sorts of things. So there's a list of, of potential things that are under consideration and likely future versions are gonna include these as, um, as part, of their, part of their offering. Oh, but the good news is OpenEdX now is LTI Advantage certified. So <laughs> you, can, you can count on having all of those things in there um, now. Oh, sorry, just those three. So you only need those three to be certified. We have those three now, we're certified, yay. With limitations, and he'll talk about those too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, one of the reasons why LTI 1.3 is the improved security. So it uses an OAuth, um, OAuth 2 authentication flow with OpenID connect messages to exchange information. Um, so it's more scalable and secure, scalable in that you can rotate keys or, or have keys distributed across many services. You don't have to like have one secret little token that you tell your instructors to use and um, they have it exposed. Um, and it's using, yeah, so it's better than um, OAuth 1's shared secret uh, flow. Um, the message exchange between the tools and the platforms, everything, um, every message is signed using an asymmetric key that each side of the tool can, um, can access so you can see where did this message come from? Did it really come from you? Yes, it did, okay. Um, and each platform has its own key pair. So when you're setting up the integration, there's a little bit more to do when you're gonna configure it now because there's a little bit more information that has to be, has to be known on either side um, before the, the, the two sides can, um, can share information. By the two sides, I mean the LMS, which is the consumer of the LTI, because we're talking about that direction right now, and the LTI tool, which is the provider. There's another aside. Open edX is also an LTI provider, so you can include LTI content inside of another LMS as well, but we're not really talking about that here. We're talking about the other way. I hope that's clear, sorry. Um, so yeah, the launch message is everything. Launch message is the way that these tool, the tools um, communicate back and forth between the LMS and um, the LTI app. And it is an OpenID Connect JWT token. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a uh, token sign that contains um, all the necessary information to launch the tool and provide it with the LMS capabilities like the user, user data and their learning context. Um, there's LTI Advantage configuration and endpoints in there. So um, when the tool wants to, uh, wants to communicate back to the, to the LMS, it knows how. Um, and it's, as I said before, the messages are signed uh, with, the, with the platform or the LTI tools key. And the launch message is huge. It's got all these things in it. Um, there is op there every, sort of the, the pieces of them are called claims because they're claims made by the, um, by the LMS or the tool. There's open ID connect claims like your issuer and your audience and your nonce and all of that for auth. Um, LTI 1.3 launch parameters, which is like what type of message are we sending, the version of the deployment, what the user, who the user is, what they could do, um, requesting resource ID, there's like unique identifiers and things for that so that when the request comes back, we know where to send it back to, um, launch specification in that. Um, there's LTI context claims, so like the learning context, the course ID, um, things like that, and then the LTI advantage service claims so that we know this, this particular example if you're reading it on the slides, um, has the, um, the grading, grading service claims in it. And so yeah, we've talked about the, the specification so far, but Giovanni's gonna walk us through the actual details of launch. I have this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, LTI point 3 launches are the mechanism that the it, that the LMS uses to launch a tool and the mechanism that a, a tool has to communicate back to the LMS. So uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you, as a learner, look at uh, a typical LTI 1.3 launch, this is what you'd see. You'd see the content loading, 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 wait just a bit, and ta-da, the content appears on the screen. But under the hood, we have a series of processes and, and, and requests happening that are making sure that the information is passed through the tool securely and like user information is, 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 is signed and, and, and uh, we're, I'm gonna cover a bit of the process and it's a bit scary and it looks like this. It's a huge diagram and kinda complex. Where's the laser? So, 
<laughs> so here we have the platform, here we have the user agent, which is user browser, and then we have the tool. <coughs> so the first step before we actually do the LTI launch is that the, LM the LMS prepares user, uh, some information regarding what's being launched and creates a, a, a launch, uh, a pre-flight request. It's basically sending over some information to the tool so it can send back <coughs> secure variables um, to, um, to make sure that the request is really coming from the LMS and it's being launched from the right place. So it's, uh, this is a simple redirection. So it's, a, it, it's an iframe rendered in the LMS and it's a new URL with a few parameters that the tool will use to deter determine what to launch at first. And then the tool receives that message and, it, uh, and then uh, that happens in the user browser. So it loads up a link and then the tool receives that message checks it if the tool is configured properly, and then sends back two important variables, which are the state and the nonce, and they are used inside the, uh, the launch message to avoid uh, replay attacks, basically. And this is just the pre-flight part of the request. Then this is a redirection that goes back into the LMS. The LMS takes those variables and computes the launch message. That big thing you saw that Joe showed you, with the launch message is a big GWT token you can see here. And that's rendered in a form in the LMS, and it, it's hidden by CSS, and there's a JavaScript thing that clicks and posts the form. It needs to happen through the user browser because the tool can set cookies, and it needs to be able to access cookies in order to make sure that uh, it's the right environment. So after that, the tool validates the response by checking the, uh, the signature of the message, decoding the parameters, and then finally showing the content to the end user. That's the flow of a normal launch. That's what a student sees when he loads up and see. Obviously, he's not seeing the complicated thing ha things happening in the background. So yeah, this is just uh, the same GIF loading again. Uh, and this is a simple launch, lo uh, which basically is the content launch of what the student sees. We also have the diff linking launch, which is what, author is what an author uses to select content inside the tool. So deep linking is one of the big uh, advantages of LTI 1.1.3, and without having to have like coding skills or knowledge or custom parameter knowledge, it allows instructors to select content or author content directly in the tool without having a separate login straight from the studio. It's a, it's a, there's a small difference in the launch message. Instead of being a content message, it is a deep linking message. And it sends back um, uh, a, a final uh, message to the LMS uh, with the content that the instructor selected and created. Uh, and that looks like this. Uh, basically, the uh, instructor, of course, author goes into the LMS, clicks on the deep linking link, and it's presented with the two authoring uh, service, and it inserts or selects some content there, and ta -da, that's saved into, the LM uh, into Studio and that's what's going to be presented to the students. So this is a different flow. It uses the same deep, uh, launch process, but it's used for authors instead of being used by students. Uh, so this is H5P, it's like, it's like in a loop. Oh. Sorry? OK, we, uh, we can come back. Uh, we can come back to this uh, later in the question section. So deep linking flow also has a complex diagram, but it's kind of similar to the normal launch. So it's the same pro launch process with a different message. And then the instructor sees the tool's UI. So this is outside uh, Open edX. And then the tool sends a message back to the LMS. And that's what's going to be displayed to the end users. Uh, obviously, I'm skipping a few detailed steps here. but <laughs> 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 And this is what it looks like. You configure a tool, launch to the authoring, and select the content, and goes back to the LMS. And that's what's going to be presented to the students. Uh, aside from that, as, uh, the messages are used mostly to display content and to direct uh, students or course authors between the tool and the LMS. We also have the service calls. And they are used to, uh, as a server-to-server -server communication to pass grades and student information from the tool, uh, from, from the platform to the tool. Uh, it uses token authentication, and uh, yeah, it's used to pass grades and retrieve enrollments. So it's way simpler than the other ones, 
it, uh, the tool, when it needs to do something, it goes to the LMS and retrieves the token. It, it sends a small sign message, and, and the LMS verifies that message and checks if the tool has access to those resources and sends the, the token back. And then uh, the tool just makes a call using a barrier token like to the, uh, uh, to the advantage endpoint. And that's it. So now that we covered how a launch and how service messages work, we're going to look at how this thing is implemented in the Open edX platform. So the entire implementation is composed of a Django plugin app plus an X block. And it is entirely hosted in X block LTI consumer repo. So all the code is there. So uh, I'm, I'm going to first cover the small uh, blocks, building blocks of the Django plugin app. Then, then I'm going to go over the Xbox ones. And then I'm going to show you a full picture, limitations, and, and, and so on. So the first and basic building block for LTI 1.3 is the LTI 1.3 module. It's, a, it's a basically a, a class that encapsulates most of the LTI specification logic. So all the token validation, uh, the coding of messages, crafting of launch messages, and preparing the parameters for launch. That's all done inside that class. And uh, uh, what, it, what is important, it's, it, that's the name of the class. It's LTI consumer class. And uh, you pass parameters, so you instance it with parameters, and it's going to be ready to do LTI things for you. Uh, it, con it, it contains helper, Django helpers, uh, Django REST framework uh, verification uh, val validation helpers. But like this does not start state. It just encapsulates LTI uh, specification logic. Uh, the next step, I, I'll put it up there, uh, uh, but the next thing that we have are the database models. They are used to store a configuration, and uh, a configuration grades, configuration grades, dip and deep linking configuration. So whatever needs to be like uh, need, needs to be like stored, it's going to be in these models. And one thing that's really important about these models is that uh, the LTI configuration, the, the, the models have an API. Uh, uh, basically a method in the model that instances an LTI consumer from that module always with the same configuration. So we always have consistent, uh, uh, we always have a consistent LTI consumer class. No matter from where you're retrieving, retrieving the configuration, uh, if you're using the model, which what you should be doing, you're getting always a consistent class with all the right settings. <coughs> then we have the views, and they are, the views are basically the, uh, the actors of that, um, of that diagram we saw, we saw before. So we have the key set view, which, which is where the, uh, the platform provides a, a URL so that tools can retrieve information, uh, retrieve the platform key and, uh, publicly and verify the signature. There's the deep linking view for saving content that instru instructor selected. And there's the LTI uh, grades and serv uh, assignments and grade services, which are, are used to store grades back in in into the platform. Those are in, those are all in Django plugin app views, and finally we have in finally in Django app we have the Python API, which is a boundary layer to isolate LTI specific things from the rest of the platform. Currently, it's used. Currently, it's used by the X, by the Xblock side to retrieve configuration, save settings, and prepare for a launch. Mm. And looking at the Xblock. Uh, the Xblock part of the implementation, uh, it uses the Python APIs to retrieve the LTI consumer, and it uses that always the same API, so it's always a consistent consumer, uh, and and it's used to provide user context of, on, on the LTI launch, launch, and that context comes from the Xblock runtime, uh, and uh, on the Xblock side, we also have two handler URLs: the access token URL and the launch callback URL, because we need the context inside those in order to be able to determine uh, permissions. And, thi and this is basically what it looks like. You have the Django plugin app with all of its uh, mo uh, modules, and you have the Xbox with those two views inside. Uh, future integrations here is, what, uh, is where we can put LTI integrations on in the future. So for example, we could integrate a new uh, course, a new discussion engine through LTI 1.3 or we could put LTI on the tree uh, content on course pages or basically anywhere in the platform. But there's a problem. As you see that these are marked differently, is that uh, th 
that's a limitation. So the current LTI on the chain implementation is bound to X block view. So you always need to have an X block somewhere in order to do LTI on the tree launches. So that causes a few problems. One of them is that every time you create a new block, you have all of the URLs changed. So you have to do all the configuration again. That's cumbersome because you have to go into your LTI tool, retrieve URLs, set up an integration, go into the X block, copy the, copy the URLs, and do all of the exchange and setup again. Course export don't work yet because, as I said, you change the URLs when you create, uh, when you export and import the course because the course ID changes. And since they are tied to, uh, to handlers, all changes. So we need to configure every single thing again once you do a course export. And only a single grade can be linked to the gradebook per block. And that's because the gradebook in the open edX platform is tied to the course structure. So you can have like the graded sections, but each graded section can only take in a grade. There's a lot of ADRs and discussions about this last one. And I put on references at the end of the slide so you can check out. And uh, so what we should do to like enable these future, future integrations. So basically, we have to remove the dependency from the X block and push all of those views into the Django plugin app views. So that way, we only need to use the Python API, and we can use the Python API anywhere without having a dependency on X block views and ever changing URLs every time we need to do some change. And well, that's something that needs to be done, but it's uh, also a contribution that we have in progress. So um, we are currently working on a pluggable LTI configuration, which allows you to set uh, instance-wide LTI configuration. So you can set up LTI 1.3 one, one time for the entire OpenEdX instance and just reuse it. And uh, there's a an merged ADR for that and uh, currently two open pull requests. Uh, but there's still a, a lot more work to be done. We have to push the Xbox, uh, Xbox view out and, <coughs> and prepare the pluggable mechanisms. And well, we have a bunch of references and, and tutorials here. And I thought those will be available in the slides. Uh, that the link is here. And now we're open to questions. Feel free to open the slides and 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 move around. <laughs> Jules, taking the mic. I'm 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 assuming from what the the limitations you just described that this will not work with CCX currently. Uh. That's a good question. Right, if but, you're, but effectively, like, create reruns, right? I don't think we tried it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might. Um, so I don't think we've tried it, but um, because it's Xbox specific and Xbox work inside of um, CCX and the, the identifiers that are being used are module identifiers and course identifiers and CCX does that, it might. Or there may be a small contribution that's required to like <laughs> tweak it. <laughs> yeah. So one thing that I can see that's a problem that can happen is that the launch will, will happen, the content will be presented, but the time the grades come back, they will be linked to the original course and not to the 6 CX one. Or the URLs will change and the launch will not work at all. <laughs> um, can you very briefly explain what the tool was with which you created the content that you then consumed via LTI? Uh, and the follow-on question on that is, what do I have to do f in order to make OpenEdX as the LTI consumer and the tool that produces the LTI play nicely with, res with respect to uh, authentication? So uh, that, that's seamless. Do you have an example of an LTI tool that you're trying to integrate with? Yeah. Okay, so this one is using H5P. So H5P has support for deep, deep linking. And what you're seeing right now is H5P authoring tool. It's not like a part of open edX or anything. So it depends on if the tool you're trying to integrate has support for deep linking and has uh, this kind of uh, 
deep linking UI. Uh, 